you turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. would like to say to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. I uh, want to t- talk to you just a little bit this morning about the showers of blessing. Amen. And uh, we'll find that over in uh, 3426 is where I've uh, seen this, but I want to start on verse at chapter 34, verse 1, concerning the showers of blessing. And of course, the uh, Jewish nation always looked for the, the early rains and the latter rains, uh, and the rains were good, but the showers are a blessing are much better. Uh, the showers of blessings are for the soul, and uh, we want to look at it this way and, and think upon uh, the dry times that we have in our life and how that sometimes it gets to be uh, a problem. Mm-hmm. And when that little shower comes, when that word of God comes, when you hear something that just opens up your heart and makes you want to cry, that's showers of blessing. Amen. And uh, we we have a we have trouble on every hand with the devil and what he uh, causes us, and so. This is this morning we want to speak to you a little bit and talk to you and read to you a little bit about these showers of blessing. But in verse one, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Uh, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God and unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves, should not the shepherds feed the flock. Amen. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. And this morning, I wanted to read this in, in, in order to get across what I was talking about, the shower of blessings. Listen, we don't, when we have a shepherd like this or we have a pastor like this or we have someone that does not magnify the lord and tell us the truth and thank the lord we have one that does tell us the truth and i'm not trying to say anything like that but in their case the, all those shepherds are the the uh, were telling them lies amen and they were telling them things that did not uh, uh need to be told to them and uh, they weren't getting the showers. And so he says here, the diseased have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, and neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty, you have ruled them. Right. And so we see these things that are going on and we're going on and uh, with with the nation and they were having all of these problems and you, you, if you apply these these things that he said, these diseases, you'll notice that you can use them as a spiritual uh, effect. And he says here, the diseased have you not, you're not uh, 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 strengthened. And so the diseased are those that we see so many uh, this day and time with with sickness and not able to uh, do for themselves and all this. And they have to go to the doctor and they have to get the the medicines and they have to have people pray for them and these things and this strengthens them. But here, these prophets have not done this to these people. And he says here, uh, they have not healed that which was sick, neither have they bound up that which was broken. And so some of the seriousest things that you can think of medically that can happen to you, broken limbs, broken heart, or, or whatever, they had not helped them in any right. way to do any of this. And listen, people, it's the same way today. Uh, we, have, we have what they call themselves pastors, 
and prophets or, or whatever, and they're, they're pouring out and saying, oh, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and you need to do this, but all they're saying is, give me, give me, give me. Right. And so these things does not, does not profit. And a lot of your big ministers and your big churches and all this are so large that they cannot minister to them and they cannot uh, know their problems and all they're doing is just preaching to a great multitude right. and not, not touching anything or helping anything. So here uh, in verse 5 it says, and they were scattered because there was there is no shepherd and they become meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered, and the meat that he's talking about here is the the people that come up to them and criticize them and tell them false things and saying that they what they're saying is not true. Even if we even if they had people in that day that knew the truth, if they would try to explain it to them, it, it would be just like a, the uh, meat uh, meat to the beast of the field. They would devour it. They wouldn't believe it. They would criticize it. And this is some of the things that uh, is lost. In a drought, in a dry time when everything, just like California, is on fire. Mm -hmm. California is burning up, right. and and the drought is on. And what what they need is a good rain. But <coughs> what these people needed was some good showers to to encourage their hearts and to let them know that uh, things uh, could be better and things would be better if they would get them someone that would tell the truth. So therefore, in verse 7, therefore the shepherd hear the, therefore ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says, says the Lord God, surely because my flock became prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did this, my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and feed not my flock. Right. And I notice here he called them, neither did my shepherds. And so these shepherds that are here, uh, evidently at one time, was probably trying to tell these people the truth and, and, and help them. But he says, now he says, here, uh, my shepherds, uh, 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 there, was, there was no shepherds, neither did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. And so he, he says, they, know, they won't feed them, and they won't take care of them. He says, so I am going to deliver them out of their mouth. And I'm assuming probably that what happened, that they all died. The shepherds died because they wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't do the Lord. And don't say that here. But, but the thing of it is, the Lord is watching over us this morning. And the, 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 war, the Lord is watching over all of our country. And listen, the thing of it is, with the most of them, the shepherds are not feeding Right, and so he's going to do something. He's going to do something for the people, and so the shepherds they're going to be moved out of the way. And I don't know how this is going to all take place, but I do know this: He did it here in Jeremiah, and Jeremiah, Jeremiah told it just. I mean, Ezekiel told it just like it was. And so, in listen now, in verse eleven, for thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and search them out as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the, the, the clouds and the dark days. And, and we know this morning this would refer to uh, also, uh, as uh, uh, the, the the Israelites were captured and sent into all the world, and and they and they're coming back. Even in Russia, 
uh, when the wall was torn down, all, right. all, of, all of the Israel, all the Jews that wanted to come out of Russia, come back to Israel. And so he's bringing them home now even, and uh, there's greater, greater things going to happen, and they're, they're going to all come back to Israel and be there, and he's going to be ruler over them. So he says here, uh, uh, he says here in verse 14, I will feed them after he brings them back. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon a high mountain of Israel shall their full be. Therefore shall they lie in a, go a good fold and in a fat pasture. They shall they feed upon the mountain of Israel. And this this morning just shows us what an opportunity we have to serve the Lord and what Amen. a blessing we can get from it and how that we can be a blessing to other people and tell these tell these people that go into these false denominations and, and everything that they're telling them everything, how that they can escape that and how that they can stay out of these dry places and how that they can come here uh, and have showers of blessing. They can hear the word, the word proclaimed. And Amen. so we need, we need, we need every time we get a chance not to hesitate, but to tell people in a good, kindly, not a haughty manner, but in a good, kindly manner, listen, I can tell you somebody that or some place that you can come that you can hear because I hear people all the time now uh, uh, talking about this abortion and things like this, but yet they don't know what to do about it. And uh, Jewel come over uh, the other day and was talking to me about this and she said, I don't know what to do. I've always voted in the Democratic ticket. And I said, well, Jewel, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna vote for Trump. But the thing of it is, uh, all of this that's going on, it's, it's against it's against God's law. Amen. Murder is one of the things thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill. And so this morning, when we see this going on in our country like it is now, we can be we can be aware that the drought is on. It's on. Amen. And I, you know, we may have a short time yet for the country to come back. I don't know. But the thing of it is, it's in terrible condition this day and time. And you can just look at your, your officials and all your leaders and what they have to say about this and say about that. And they're putting their approval on the things that God condemned and said that uh, they're not to do. And so here this morning, he says, after he seeks them out, he says in verse 17, And as for you, O my flock, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between rams and the goats. Seem, seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pastures, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture, and to have drunk of deep water, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they have drank that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I will even, I will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean, because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horns, Till you have scattered them abroad, and so these people are being mistreated. Right about the sick and the all those they're being mistreated. He says, therefore will I say, save my flock, and they shall no more be afraid. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And so this these these things cannot continue with God. And uh, he's telling the people here. And Ezekiel, uh, as Ezekiel writes down, he's telling them, he told them in Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. He told them, he told them from verse one to the verse, last verse in Jeremiah, hey, you have sinned, you've done these things, you've done this. And so there's a reckoning coming. And so people has not got no whole lot of uh, uh, way of denying that they've heard the truth. Right. Because here's the thing. Uh, maybe a hundred years ago, it might have not, not been like it is today. I know it wasn't. P the pastor would get up and preach to a big congregation, and they would they would go along with it. But on out, they didn't go. But now we've got 
the ability to go to Germany, China, mm -hmm. Russia, anywhere in the world. And if they hear it, listen, it's just like they were sitting right here. They're responsible for what they're hearing. Right. And uh, it's such a blessing to know that we can do these things. And so here again, uh, in verse uh, uh, 24, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them, I and the Lord have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safe, safe in the wilderness and, and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the place around about my hill a blessing and I will cause the showers to come down in his season there shall be showers of blessings. Amen. And this morning, this is a promise of God. Amen. The song that we sing, there shall be showers of blessing, oh, that they might fall. Listen, that's what we need to continue praying for, oh, that they might fall. Amen. Because, listen, this old world is dry. Mm -hmm. And uh, it needs, it, and, and I'm talking about spiritually dry. Uh, they have no they have no need of God. They have no need to worship all of the, those that, a lot of them are going to church, they're going for one purpose, and that's to be seen or to mm -hmm. see somebody. And just, it's just a habit. Right. So this morning, we hope this morning that some of these things that I'm reading will help you to understand why we need such a blessing from God and how much of a drought is on. And when you see all of this vulgar, ungodly stuff talked on about in the world right. listen that you'll understand that uh it's not going unheard uh god is hearing it god is seeing it and god is going to revenge you all of these things and our country is going to come to its knees or it's going to come to an end one and so he says here in, in verse 27 and the tree of the field shall yield her fruit as this after the showers of blessings and and, and we uh, we know that they're talking to Israel, and this may be after the millennial reign. And I don't know when it's going to be, but anyway. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathens, neither Amen. shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger and in the land. And, and notice he's saying a plant, and I don't, I, I don't, I never, I, I can't understand it, but anyway, it's some kind of a thing that he's going to do to bless Israel. A plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with the hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathens anymore. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and they, Amen. and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. And ye, my flock, Ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord. And so we see this morning what he's what he's talking about there. And I want to read something over in Ezekiel uh, thirteen, if you, if you would read in verse uh, thirteen, verse nine. Turn over there and look at that. Ezekiel thirteen, verse nine. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine, divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others dabbed it. And this dabbing is, is what they put, is called mortar, and they dabbed it. 
with untempered mortar, which right. would not hold up, would not hold up, would not last. And this is this is the word that they were they were telling the people. And he 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 compared it to dabbing with untempered mortar. And that's what they put up a wall when he saw, and you dab it with this stuff, and it falls off in, in, in six months, and it's not no strength to it. And so he says, uh, because even they have sickness, and, and okay, well, and lo, others dab it with untempered mortar. Now, verse 11, say unto them which dab it with untempered mortar that it shall fall, there shall be an overflowing shower, and ye shall. Old gray hailstones shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. And listen, it don't sound like there. It's, it's showers of blessing. Right. Notice what it says. And when the wall is falling, it shall not be said unto you, There is a dabbing wherewith ye have dabbed it. Therefore, the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind. In my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger, and great hailstorms in my fury to consume it. So the, the the thing that he's saying here is about the showers of blessings. But he's saying also that that which they built up, that wall that they built up, that false religion that they put mm -hmm. out, and they dabbed it and, and patched up the places where that people were trying to believe and and dab it with something else, and I'm saying with the revised versions and things of this nature, right. they have read it, they have cut this word up, and it's going to fall down. Amen. And, and, and he don't say with showers of blessing, but he says with shower and with storm. And so he says here uh, in, in uh, 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 let me look and see if I can find it again. Uh, be an overflowing shower in my anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. And so this this work that they will be doing is with uh, with with false prophets and the Lord is going to consume it. He's going to tear it down. And thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have dabbed it with the untempered mortar and will and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither have they dabbed it. So we when we think of this wall too, notice uh, the wall that fell in Russia uh, in the time when they were under the uh, strict communists, and they were they still now, but they were nobody could get in, nobody could get out. All of the, a lot of the Israelites were over there, and they were starving to death, and they were suffering, and all this. Well, that was a wall that he tore down, mm -hmm. and uh, and they left out, and so. This word is being fulfilled every every day somewhere in the world, and it's getting closer to the time when that Israel is going to come back in a great, a great uh, herd of people, and they're going to fill Israel up again, and they're going to set up their kingdom there. And so here, to wit, in verse sixteen, the last verse, to wit, the prophets of Israel which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her. And there is no peace, says the Lord God. And there is no peace. Jeremiah, if you would turn with me to Jeremiah, believe this, Jeremiah 3, 3, I can find it right easy. I have, I have some trouble sometimes finding some of these things, but just bear with me. I need to read it. If I could. Without, I know it's right here. Yes. Jeremiah 3, 3. Jeremiah 3 3. Right, let's start at verse 1. They said, If a man put away his wife and she goes from him and becomes another man, shall he return unto her again? Shall it not that land be greatly polluted? But that thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Talking to Israel, and they had they had played the harlot for years and years and years and years and years, and they still in the process of someone lift up thine eyes in verse 2 unto the high places and see where thou hast not been laid with in the way hast thou set for them as the Arabians in the wilderness and thou hast polluted the land with the whoredom and with the 
wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, my father, thou art the guide of my youth? Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. And so they asked him if he would redo it. He will. He will call them back. He will. They're, they're his people, and he will forgive them. And, the, and, and, and one day, Israel will be a nation that is going to be serving God. Uh, and so we, we uh, uh, I wanted to read one more thing if I could find it. Uh, Ezekiel, no, it's not that one. Uh, okay, Zechariah 10 and verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord, rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. For the idols have broken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams, and they comfort in vain. Therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. My anger, here's this, my anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats, for the and the goats are the leaders, for the Lord of hosts had visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bolt, out of him every oppressor together. And so this is this is what that is happening to the, all the people and, and the, a lot of the stuff that that we see here uh, has already passed and some of it is still to be uh, happening. But anyway, we hope that some of this reading this morning might encourage, might uh, uh, help us with this dry, Amen. dry place in our lives because, you know, uh, it's hard on you when you get dried up. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, you, you want to take it out on God. And you want to say, God, you're, you, you've left me. But here's the thing. God will show you, hey, you started it. Mm -hmm. You started it. You started doing this and doing that and, and saying this and saying that and putting your opinion on this and, and your approval on this. And listen, you started it. And so the only way to get the shower of blessing is to get forgiveness. Amen. And uh, so hopefully, hopefully this will be something for someone maybe somewhere out in the world to understand and see it may and it may help us this morning so i'm going to dismiss with a prayer father this morning we come to you thank you father for this day thank you for the ability that we had to stand here and to read thy word and father we pray that you would take these words that you would send them to the four corners of the earth father that you would Tell people and, 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 and let them know, Father, that they're need of thee and what the things are coming upon this world. And Father, for those that are Christians that have these dry places and in these dry times, Father, we pray for them and pray that they might understand that they need to get back in touch with you and, and worship thee. And these showers of blessings will continue. Thank you so much for this day and thy blessings. In Jesus' name, we do pray and thank you. Amen. Amen.